Ten thousand years. Right.
Good evening, everyone. Permit me to welcome you to this night of tribute organized by the Association of National Assembly Female Legislators of Nigeria for our late Senator Toro Oko Ewejo. You are welcome. You all are welcome. First, I'd like to invite us to please be on our feet for the National Anthem. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. Please, you may have your seat. And indeed, peace and unity will continue to reign in our country, Nigeria. Uh, it's a privilege for me to welcome these distinguished individuals in our midst this evening. I'd like to welcome and introduce to us that in our midst we have the Minister of Trade, Industry, and Investment, Otubani Adebayo. We say thank you, sir, for coming. I'd also like to welcome and introduce to the members of the public the Senate Minority Leader in person of Senator Inaya Baribe. Thank you, sir, for coming. We appreciate you. I'd like to welcome Senator Zainab Kure, Senator Betty, Honorable Mulika Tadeola. Thank you so much all for coming. And every other person that have stepped in through that gate, we say we appreciate your coming. And swiftly, we'd like to move to the opening prayer. And I'd like to invite Dr. Ellen Jekele. Please join me to welcome her in a club. <laughs> Let us stand and pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, eternal King of glory, the I am that I am, the Alpha and the Omega, creator of heaven and earth, the maker of all things, you alone, who know the day we are born, and the day we are called to come back to you. We give you glory and adoration. We thank you for your great glory. Father, we are gathered here in the name of our sister, Senator Rose Oko, whom you have called to come and be with you. For each and every one of us, you know our days are in the palm of your hands. Sent her to this world. She came. She did all that you wanted to do. She fought the race, and she fought gallantly. And at the end, she has won the prize, which all of us are looking for, the glory, where you said, come, my beloved daughter, come to the place I have prepared for you. Father, we thank you for her life. We thank you for every activity we are going to have tonight. Father, her life was an exemplary life, and we pray that you will give us the courage to do the things that she did courageously. Despite her illness, 
She served her country, and she served her country very well. Father, guide our thoughts, guide our actions, guide our deeds. Let us not forget the underprivileged, because that was something that she did all through her life. She never, never forgot the underprivileged. God has raised us up so that we raise other people up. Give us the courage to do that sincerely. Father, I commit every arrangement into your hands, all the plans for this burial. And I thank you for the people who are here because it is out of love that you have come here. Everybody is afraid of gathering, but you brought your children here. Father, protect us, protect all the plans, protect everything, all the journeys they are going to make. And when the children go to the village, Father, you are now their father, you are their mother. Father, we commit them into your hands. Guide them and protect them. Any evil thoughts against them, Father, we thank you. Guide us in our deliberations this evening. Be among us. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for the gift of health. Father, we thank you for all you have done for us. We thank you for the opportunities you've given us. And we thank you for the gift of our country, Nigeria. We ask all this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, your son. And amen. We say amen. Thank you very much, ma'am. I'd like to um, welcome into our midst the former governor of Cross River State in person of Senator Lee Alimoke. We welcome you, sir. Thank you. I'd also like to welcome Gershom Bassi, Senator Gershom Bassi, you are welcome, sir. Thank you very much for coming. Indeed, we all have come out together to honor, to honor a real gem, a woman who was drawn to the plights of the less privileged, someone who was a model for justice and fair play. Going ahead this evening, I'd like to invite um, Honorable Janet Adeyemi for the welcome address. You are welcome, ma'am. Once again, I want to say good evening to every one of us here. And uh, following existing protocols, we want to thank the minister, the former governor, and all the senators and me members of House of Reps, and every other person here for coming to honor our sister, late Senator Rose Oko. I'll just reach through because I'm standing in the gap for all members. As you know, the country is so tense now that for members to fly across or travel across can be very dangerous. In the words of the philosopher David Son, who was king in Jerusalem, and I quote, life is useless. All is useless. You spend your life working, laboring, and what do you have to show for it? Generations come and generations go, but the world stays just the same. The stone still rises and it still goes down, going wearily back to back to where it must start all over again. The wind blows south, the wind blows north, round and round and back again. Every river flows into the sea, but the sea is never yet full. The water returns to where the river began and starts all over again. Everything leads to weariness, a weariness too great for words. Rose Oko, your death made the world so real to us and triggered serious reflections. Rose, you came, saw, and accomplished. You accomplished your life, your life dreams, and made your 63 years seem like 200 years when we read your bio biography of human existence. The Association of National Female Legislators, which you encourage tirelessly to come into existence, will miss you dearly for your encouraging words, especially in difficult times. I don't want to talk much, but I just want us to reflect. That's just not my words, but the words of the Holy Scriptures. When we read as Ecclesiastes 1, Chapter 1, you find that I, I just brought it out for us to reflect on because I know today the caliber of people here, 
it is time we start reflecting on what is our purpose here on earth. And when we finish, where are we going? Irrespective of our faith, whether you are a Buddhist, whether you are a Muslim, whether you are a Christian, we all acknowledge the presence of an, a God. Your understanding of that God is personal to you and the way you worship him. But that God, every religion admonishes us to love, to show love to the, to the less privileged because everything we gather, rose is lying somewhere now. Can't move, can't speak, can't talk, can't even appreciate the beauty of what she has gathered. And so all of us, when we get to the bus stops of our lives, even if you want to sit down, something will push you out. Start reflecting, guys, and let us do the right thing. The Lord will be with all of us. And on behalf of National Assembly Female Legislators, we want to say thank you. And as mothers of the nation, we equally use this opportunity to appeal to our youths. Dialogue is better than agitation using force. Yes, we knew you started well, but Ms. Krantz have hijacked it. We cannot afford to burn Nigeria because we don't have another country. So for the time God Almighty has given unto us, let us leave our marks and let us do justly to build a good country. Once again, we welcome you all. Thank you. A round of applause for her, please. Thank you very much, ma'am, for that, those beautiful lines. We do appreciate you. Indeed, our memory will continue to remain with us. There are beacons of light and inspiration to every one of us. Uh, moving ahead, I'd like to quickly welcome distinguished Senator Chukuma Utazi in our midst. We appreciate your coming. Thank you very much. I'd like to invite the, I'd like to invite every one of us to join me and join uh, the choir of TEPC crew to lead us in taking the first aim. Please, let's be on our feet. Thank you. When peace like a river attended my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll,
you very much for the powerful rendition. Thank you very much. We do appreciate you. Indeed, it is well with our soul, knowing that our Amazon is in a better place. I'd like to welcome into our midst this evening Mrs. Falasha De Ogubi, representing the Deputy Senate President. We do appreciate your presence, ma'am. Thanks for coming. We also also like to introduce to us that in our midst we have Colonel Kizito Atta, former military administrator of Cross River State. You're also welcome. Thank you very much. Quickly, I'd like to invite again Dr. Ellen Jekele for very short exhortation. Please join me to encourage her. Let us clap for our encourager here so that she can give us the word of God. Praise the Lord. God is good. And all the time. Um, Rosako was my friend, my sister. Rosako was an enigma. You could never understand her. She was full of compassion. And there was this urgency about her that God had laid on her mind to do something good. So all the steps she took in her life were guided. She was a determined woman. But what I want to bring out in this exhortation this evening is that she never lost sight of God. Politics is good. And when good people refuse to go into politics, people say politics is bad. Because politics is the only way that you can share the resources of a country evenly to everybody. So she saw that challenge and she went in. Though a politician, her values were never, her Christian values were never influenced. She did everything as if she saw tomorrow. She was strong and throughout the period of her ailment, she never said, Lord, why me? She never questioned the Lord. She took it in her pace. But she knew that there was a place up there, across the bridge, where she was going to go at the end of her life on earth. So what guided her was humility. She was very humble. She was a woman of integrity. And she was a woman that each and every one of us here if you ask who was Rose Oko, everybody will tell you that she was a good woman. What would people say about you when you are not there? What would people say about you when you can no longer talk? It is her good deeds that have brought us together here. Because she was a woman of substance, a courageous woman, a calm woman, a fair-minded woman, we are here and each and every one of us has a good thing to say. I know in the deepest access of my heart that Rose is in heaven. Where would you be when God calls you? Who are you? What do people say you are? Who are you? Are you what you say you are or you are what you do? Are you a good person? What are your motives? We could read Rose's motives. So the message she's giving us where she's lying, I don't believe that there's, um, she's actually dead as in dead. Because my Holy Bible tells me that we are transformed into glorious bodies that the naked eyes cannot see. Rose has been transformed. She's alive. Because our God is a God of the living, not a God of the dead. So Rose is alive. We can't see her, but then we can feel her. So if you want to pay tribute to Rose, pay it with your life. From today on, 
prepare yourself what you are going to do for humanity. Rose saved humanity with her life. What are you going to do with humanity? So tonight when you go, ask God to reveal who you are. If you're a politician, God has put you in that position to help the underprivileged. It's not for yourself. So leadership is not about you. Leadership is about the others. And Rose taught me that. A few times when she was feeling poorly, I said, Rose, why do you have to go to the National Assembly? She said she had to go because it was her duty. So she served the country with her life. And please let us also serve the country with our lives. We are the selected few. God has given us the opportunity. Let us not waste the opportunity. So that at the end of our life, God will tell us, my son, my daughter, well done. Come to the place prepared for you. We pray that Rose is resting in peace. And we pray that her legacy lives on. And we pray that because of her, we are going to become better people. If we're good people, each and every one of us is going to be better. So do all you can to serve your nation. Let Nigeria be the better place. Nigeria is one of the most beautiful countries in the world. You are at home. So I beg you, we don't need the whole people. Be the light. Because when there's darkness, one candle lights up. Rose was a light that she lit up so many places. Let us all endeavor. Anybody we meet, let that person not go home sad. Let us not leave anybody miserable. Anybody we meet, may they take home words of encouragement. So again, the family, those shoes were so big. But I know that with God, you'll be able to rise up to the occasion. All her friends who are here, it is love for Rose that brought you here, otherwise you'd have been at home. So I thank you very much for coming. And please look deep into your lives and ask yourself, who am I and what did God put me on earth to do? What's the purpose of my life? She knew the purpose of her life and she lived it to the fullest. What is your own purpose of life? What is your own meaning? What's your life's meaning? Work hard towards it so that at the end, People will gather and say, indeed, this lady was a good lady. Just like the centurion said when Christ died on the cross, he said, indeed, he was truly the son of God. What would people say when you go? Ah, this wicked person has gone. No, indeed, she was a good person. Indeed, he was a good person. Thank you very much. And God bless you all and take you home safely. A round of applause for our please. Thank you very much for sharing the word with us through the life of our late Senator Dr. Rose Oko. You will agree with me that she was indeed our multi-talented human effigy of humanity. You've heard it through the word. She was a classical personification of patriotism. She was a woman of many parts and who, in it all, she loved God. I want to use this opportunity to welcome into our midst Senator Francis Fadounsi, the Chairman, Trade and Investment. I also like to introduce to us that in our midst we have Senator Tolu Odebi. Thank you for coming. We have Dame Paul in Tallinn, the Minister of Women Affairs. We appreciate you, ma'am. You always identify with good people and good things. Thank you. Moving ahead this evening. I'd like to invite quickly the Honorable Minister of Trade, Industry, and Investment for a very short tribute. A round of applause for him, please. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, uh, distinguished members of the Senate, Honorable Members, Honorable Ministers, ladies and gentlemen, I'm always uh, amused when uh, compares call politicians to make remarks and say they're going to make short remarks. I'm sure many of you here can uh, identify with that. It's very difficult to get us to, to make short remarks. However, I shall attempt to do so this evening. Tribute in honor of late Senator Dr. Rose Okoji Oko, 
death may be the end of physical interaction with our loved ones. But always remember that this is the beginning of a great opportunity to be inspired by the good memories we have and that the departed continue to guide us through their words and actions from when they were with us. The year 2020 has indeed been unprecedented, and that is why it is with a heavy heart that I stand here to give a tribute in honor of the demise of a dogged senator from Cross River North Territorial District and the chairman of the Senate Committee on Industry, Trade, and Investment, Senator Rose Okoji Oko. Her death elicited a feeling of sadness and gloom. Senator Oko was one of Nigeria's finest serving lawmakers and an ardent believer in a fair society. She was a fighter who was never afraid to stand for her beliefs. She never took the easy path, and through sacrifice, she inspired others to serve selflessly. We have indeed lost a woman who steadfastly represented the best ideals of our country. Although her demise was least expected, and amidst the global attention of the COVID-19, which has killed thousands, the life she lived has left an indelible mark on those that crossed her path. Her life is undoubtedly proof that some qualities are timeless. Character, courage, integrity, and honor. Her life embodying those virtues cast a long shadow that will certainly be for many years to come. With Senator Oko, I have seen how diligence, hard work, fairness, forthrightness, and compassion all come together and lead to excellence. Over the years, I have repeatedly marveled at her brilliant mastery of self-reinvention and how effortlessly and gracefully she did it all. The late Senator Rozoko will always be remembered for her good works while alive, and as a nation, it is our privilege to have had such an iconic woman, a humble soul, a font of charm and charisma, combined with intelligence and bravery as one of our own in the Federal Ministry of Industry, Trade, and Investment. As one of the women who championed development issues under Industry, Trade, and Investment at the National Assembly, as well as being a promoter of girl-child education, her voice and advocacy will be sorely missed, but I pray that her work will be sustained by her successors. Few of us have been tested the way she was or required to show the kind of courage that she did. But all of us can aspire to the courage to put the greater good above our own. I am particularly grateful for her effort to always put partisanship aside to do what she thought was best for the country. She believed that every citizen has a responsibility to make something of the freedoms given by our Constitution. Sadly, it's only human to wish up what the Creator has decreed down. We painfully bow to the giver whose taking we cannot question. While we mourn Senator Oko's passing, we are eternally grateful for her distinguished service to our nation and the incredible example she set for us all. I condole with Senator Oko's family, the government and people of Cross River State over her demise. Her death is a great loss to the Senate and Nigerian women in politics. I know that she will be greatly missed by her colleagues in the Ninth Assembly. Our consolation is that she gave her best to her family and to Nigeria. May her soul find eternal rest, and may those left behind continue to find solace in her legacy. Our sympathy and kindest wishes are with you. Adieu, distinguished Senator Dr. Rose Okoji Oko. Otumba Adibayo, on behalf of the Federal Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment. I thank you. A round of applause for him, please. Thank you very much. He, did, he, he has not only come to grace this occasion with his presence, he also came prepared. Another round of applause for him, please. We do appreciate you. Thank you very much. You will agree with him that he, indeed the illustrious daughter of Okoma was a forceful driver of change. She was an ambassador of Cross River State. And I'm glad this day we have this much to say about her. Quickly, I'd like to invite the Honorable Minister of um, Women Affairs to give us a tribute on late Dr. Senator Rose Oko. A round of applause for her, please.
members of the family, distinguished senators here present, members of the National Assembly, honorable ministers, friends of my dear sister, gentlemen of the press. This is a very, very difficult moment, not just for me, but for the family and all Nigerian women. Rose, we've gone a very long way with her. We've been friends since during the Better Life program, and we've worked very closely when she was in the House of Representatives and was, I was then the Minister of State, Science and Technology. We worked, and we were always in touch. There is no time that I was doing anything that I would reach out to Rose that she would not be there. Rose was one woman that the ha has the heart of gold for her people. And her constituency can testify that she is one of those senators that offered her life for her people. She is a true representative of her people. And what really breaks my heart the more, with the very few members, female members we have in the uh, National Assembly, God has called her back home. We have no right to question God. He gives and he has taken. All we need to do is to pray for her poor soul and to pray that the children and the entire family she leaves behind Leave that legacy, leave that life of service to her people so that her name will continue to live on. I know Rose is not with us now, but she lives on because her leg legacy lives on and she will remain fresh in our hearts. I condole the whole family, I condole the government and people of Cross River State. I condole the entire Nigerian woman, and I pray that God will raise great leaders, true representatives of the people like Ruth, that will be there again to represent us. It is a very, very heavy moment. I recall the last encounter we had when I invited her during the commissioning of the office, she was there. Sadly, today she has left us. Rose, may your soul rest in peace. May God grant you eternal rest. May your soul and the souls of all the faithful departed rest in perfect peace. Thank you. Thank you very much, Minister. We appreciate you. Ma'am, round of applause for her, please. She did represent the Nigerian women in her highest capacity. And for that reason, I want to say that she gave that very brilliant representation. She offered it to her constituents. She, she represented Nigerian women in the highest capacity. Another round of applause for the minister, please. Thank you very much, ma'am. Permit me to quickly announce the presence of Senator Lillian Ekunufe. She's the chairman, Senate Committee on Science and Technology. We do appreciate your presence in our midst, ma'am. I'd also like to introduce to us that we have here Senator Raz Razaki Raji. You are welcome, sir. Thank you very much. Welcome, ma'am. You are welcome. Thank you. So quickly, I'd like to invite Senator Einaya Barabi for his tribute on late distinguished Senator Dr. Rose Oko. A round of applause for him, please. He got here much more in good in time. Let me rest on all the protocols already established and welcome everybody to this solemn occasion. Ordinarily, uh, we wouldn't have to say much because we have done the valedictory session for our uh, departed colleague on the floor of the Senate. 
But it's very difficult for us to come here and not go with uh, one or two things that we have to say about her. For us that are Igbos, what we normally do with death is to honor it, fear it. Uh, sometimes we go all the way, and that is reflected in Igbo names. And uh, one of the very uh, significant Igbo names is Onwe uh, Onwe is death. Aha is your name. And so when they name somebody Onwe Buaha, they do it because they mean that when you have done so well in life, death will never take away your name. And because Rose has affected people, Rose has impacted on people, Rose has done so much that almost everybody that comes to talk about her will always talk about her gentleman and then the way that she relates with everybody. So death will not take away her name. I wish to tell the family that the Senate will be with you at the final day that we're going to lay her to rest. We will all be there and we will also make whatever contribution that we can make to be sure that she is laid to rest in a fit and very proper and lustrous manner. I want to thank each and every one of you and say that our Senate has lost four members in this current session. And what one other name that he was give is Onwara. Death, please don't come again. We want to wish and pray to God to continue to hold the rest of us so that we don't have anything besetting the Senate again along this line. Onwara, Onwara, leave us alone so that we can stay the rest of our session and go back to our families in peace. Thank you, and God bless every one of us. Thank you very much, sir. A round of applause for him. We say death, oh, leave us alone. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, quickly, there's this thing we need to do again in memory of late Senator Dr. Rose Oko. It is because we love her that we all have come to gather here this evening. I'd like to invite us to be on our feet and join the crew of the TEPC again for another hymn. This time around, just one, one, uh, one stanza. Thank you very much. We'll be taking great is their faithfulness. so much everyone please you may take your seat quickly i'd like to invite here the former governor of cross river state in person of senator liel imoke to give his tribute to late senator dr rose oko a round of applause for him please
Thank you very much, um, Your Excellencies, uh, very distinguished senators, um, the leader of the Senate, honorable members of the House of Representatives, Daniel and the children of Rose Oko, very distinguished guests, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I, I think that um, Rose Oko's departure probably hit me much more than um, I had imagined for many reasons. And um, I may I not have the opportunity to, to share them with you um, today. But um, Obioma and I um, have always been part of the Yoko family, just like the Yoko family has been part of the Imoke family. And um, I think that goes back a long way. And um, I, would, I, would, I would just speak briefly about my own um, personal admiration um, for the distinguished senator who's passed on. Um, in Cross River State, probably in most of Nigeria, we really don't have a lot of women that um, stand out and um, are exceptional. And oftentimes, when you have women like that, um, they, they, they are not even given an opportunity um, to be of service. Um, in the case of uh, Rose Oko, Rose was someone who, who, as early as her early 30s, was, was already in public service as a commissioner in, in the Cross River State Public Service and commissioner for education. A and she established legacies at that age. Um, and that, that struck me because Rose Oko was a name that we heard of. Yes, she was a few years older than the rest of us, but she had established herself, her person, her personality, and her capability very early in life. So as we grew up, we used to look up in admiration to this woman. She wasn't our colleague. She wasn't our compatriot. She wasn't our associate. She was senior. And so we all gave her due respect. And even though most of that was from a distance, um, it was as a result of her accomplishments. And um, I, I think that when you celebrate Rose Oko, there's so much to celebrate. Not only her accomplishments at, at her age, but her character. It's, it's always easy for a woman who's exposed at the way, at the levels and the way Rose was exposed to lose some of that strength, that character, and that dignity. And that was something that I saw Rose Oko never lose. So as she grew up, after being the commissioner, as she moved on to the Refugee Commission and led the Refugee Commission, I don't think, I mean, I'm not saying this because I know her, but her leadership of the Refugee Commission was unprecedented. And a lot of people don't even recall that. So at a very tender age, she was accomplished in many ways. And, and, I, and I think even going through the Biography. I don't think anybody also has listed her success in business. Rose was a successful business person, a real estate developer. A lot of people don't know that fact. So for us, who used to admire Rose from a distance, it was actually a privilege to work with her politically. And because she was so dogged as a politician, you know, she worked very hard at a party that 
basically she's, she funded in Cross River State and managed through time. And even though um, we were not political associates as it were, we still admired her effort from a distance. And that is why I think I celebrate Rose Oko. I had the privilege of, as it were, having several meetings with her on her political career. And I said to her, please come into the party. So it's not as if Rose Oko came looking for me to join the politics. I was looking for quality representation. And so it was irrelevant whether that quality representation was an individual who was in the PDP or outside the PDP. It was too important, the representation of the people of Cross River State North, both in the, in the House of Reps and in the Senate, was too important to let it to anybody. And so, literally, I literally had to draft Rosoko into the PDP to run the elections into the National Assembly, in the first instance, the House of Represent Representatives. But guess what? It was easy. When you pick the right person, then it becomes easy. And so, working with Rose Oko and running a race as Rose Oko meant the, the party, the PDP, had gained. And she won her election with ease. Not because of Leili Moke or because of the PDP, but because of Rose Oko and who Rose Oko was. And, and that's very important because sometimes it, it, it can be quite frustrating when representation is not qualitative. And, and because her representation was so, so qualitative, first in the House of Representatives, it was only natural that when the seat of the Senate was vacated, it was only natural that she just was a person to fit the bill to become the senator. And so for me, it was natural that Rose Oko would run the Senate seat, and she did it, and she won. And through this period, I saw distinguished Senator Rose Oko go through significant challenges. And I, and I used to scold her, you know, I'd, I'd spend a lot of time with her, you know, talking about the state, uh, uh, the development, you know, and, and what she's doing. And I, I would consistently scold her. And the reason I would scold her is that I would say to her, you cannot not take good care of your health because you are in public service. And I would say, you're due for a checkup. And she would say, no, I have to finish with Senate matters. I have, to, I have to address constituency matters before I travel. And I'd say, no, 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 please travel. Because we need you more alive. But she would put aside her trips consistently and repeatedly. She would postpone the trip. Oh, no, I'm, I'll, and I'll, I'll, I'll think she's gone for a checkup. I'll call. Ah. Distinguished, you're still here? No, 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 I had to sort out. Oh, Senate President wanted me to do this. I said, oh, distinguished, please. Please. And so, you can say that she actually passed on in total service to this country. And for me, there was something about her that very few politicians have. Very, very few. And, and I, I say this because we all know ourselves. Rose was 
as loyal a politician and a human being as you can find. She would consult, she would discuss, and she would take the party position. She would air her views. She may not agree at all times, but at the end of the day, she would always consistently take the party position when decisions were to be made. And so for me and, and for my family, we, we lost someone who represented the best of Cross River State. We lost someone whose elegance, whose character, whose beauty, you know, reflected what we are as a people in Cross River. We lost someone whose pedigree and whose quality we may have difficulty replacing. And it, it, it's amazing how she was able to achieve all of this and raise her children. You know, if, if someone told you, oh, Rose has six children, you'd be like, what? You mean this? You understand? But they're all there. And she took, paid particular attention to every single child and was doing this in all, with all other responsibilities that she had. And when her husband passed on a few years back, you know, I just thought, wow, what a burden on this woman. You know, but she stood strong. She was an Amazon. And so for me, it's something that I'm still yet to come to terms with. But the Lord has and did give us Rosoko. And he gave us Rosoko for a purpose. And distinguishing into Rosoko accomplished her mission on earth. I want to believe that. And so to the children, I say, be proud. Not only should be proud, but be honored. To the children, I say to you, be strong. And I say to you, her legacies will remain. And I also know she has imbibed those legacies in you. So I know amongst you are more those Okos and more Professor Okos. And so at this time, I, take, uh, I appeal that you take courage, be strong, and indeed continue to celebrate the life of Rosoko. May the soul of Rosoko rest in perfect peace. Thank you very much, sir. A round of applause for him. Please, let's keep it rolling. Let's keep it rolling. That was rich. Indeed, she was a dogged fighter who impacted honor to her family, her state, and the entire women folks. So please, let's celebrate her again in our round of applause. Quickly, I'd like to invite Senator Betty Apiafi, apologies if I didn't pronounce it well, to speak on behalf of female legislators. You're welcome, ma'am. Join me to encourage her with round of applause. Good evening, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. I stand on all um, established protocols. Um, the rules of the Senate, as many of us call her, a gentle, intelligent, beautiful sister and friend. You are an amazing Amazon, determined to take the impossible in your gentle way. You had a distinguished career in the public service. At the end of it, you had one more river to cross. You wanted to serve your people more. You wanted to break yet another glass ceiling. You formed a political party. How daring. You contested twice in elections and you lost. But you never gave up. And you moved from one party to the other, came to the People's Democratic Party, and you contested and won elections in the 7th Assembly. 
We met at the Seventh Assembly and we became friends. He contested again in the Eighth and the Ninth Senate. He won elections, sorry, again in the Eighth and the Ninth Senate. We are again our paths crossed in the Ninth Senate, so it was easy for us to rekindle our friendship. As a senator, you were one of the most, you moved most, one of the most, some of the most critical motions and presented some of the most critical bills to affect this nation positively. Listening to you make a presentation in, in the Senate was such joy because your bills and motions were so extremely well researched. Our dear sister, we are eight female senators in the Ninth Assembly, sisters and friends, and now you left us, leaving seven have broken sisters. But we thank God for the gift of you. And like I said, the day we are making, um, presenting tributes in the Senate, I will always remember, because you always told us how the those who, who made it easy for you to continue to serve your people. And I'm glad I'm speaking right after the former governor of Cross River State, His Excellency, Senator Lea Limoke. You always told us how Senator Lea Limoke and his wife, Mrs. Obiomai Lea Limoke, stood by you in your political career. Like you just finished saying to us, he went and fished you out from the political party you formed brought you to the People's Democratic Party, and you won election. You were determined. Very few women are given the, the grace and the determination that you had. You left behind in the labor marks in the sand of time. Your children shall rise up and praise you because you were a virtuous woman, a mother in a million. You loved your family. You loved everything that had to do with the cause of women. Like the Minister for Women Affairs said, as the chair, as the chair women committee in the Senate, when they were opening the office, the women, uh, Ministry of Women Affairs office, you were the only female member. You, yourself and Senator Stella Odwa were the only two female members that followed me there. You were always available. And I recall that in, in December, Senator Stella Odwa and Senator Raji Rasaki and I were here when you had your Christmas carol. I never knew that would be the last time I will see you. What can we say? The Lord give up and the Lord has taken. But one thing I know for sure is that you left in a blaze of glory. You left a fulfilled woman. You left achieving that which was up uppermost in your mind. There was nothing left to achieve. So we ask that you rest in perfect peace. And for your family, your lovely children, we say, weep not, for your mother lived a life you should be proud of. We are all so proud of her. For your constituents, I say weep not. And for your state, I say weep not. She has left very strong um, examples for us to look, at, look up to. And like the, uh, our sister who took the, um, um, the um, exhortation said, we, are, we have this strong assurance that our sister is resting in heaven. She, ha she has run her race. She has finished her course. And we wish her to have a wonderful rest in the bosom of the Almighty. May God bless us all in Jesus' name. A round of applause for all, please. Thank you very much, ma'am. And Christy said, just when I approached her and inquired that how best do you want your mom, what, what, what do you want to... What do you want people to know about your mom? She said, for three months, I have been searching for the best word to describe my mother. And she's still searching. 
Indeed, she was a virtuous woman. A round of applause for her, please. Thank you very much. I do appreciate everyone. Uh, it's been a beautiful evening so far. I'd like to quickly invite one of the children to give his or her tribute. Quickly. Thank you. We welcome you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Henry Oko, and I stand on all existing protocol. Um, on behalf of myself and my family, we would like to thank uh, members of the National Assembly present and the female um, parliamentarians that set this event up to honor our late mother. I would especially like to thank, on behalf of myself and my siblings, Senator Leo Limoke, who has been very, very influential in our lives and for officially adopting me as a son. I'm here to read my tribute to my late mother. So if you can join me on page 22. If it becomes difficult, please help me read with me. Farewell, mom. If roses grew in heaven, Lord, please pick a bunch for me. Place them in my mother's arms and tell her they're for me. Tell her I love her and I miss her. And when she turns to smile, place a kiss upon her cheek and hold her for a while. Because remembering her is easy. I do it every day. But there is an ache within my heart that will never go away. To the world, you are one person. But to me, you are the world. You taught me love, patience, and endurance. You taught me how to pray and lead by example. You praised me whenever I did good and pointed out my mistakes with that stern, gentle voice. You encouraged me to work hard in school and taught me everything about responsibility. Your voice still echoes wisdom in the hallways of my days. I think about you every day. I do, Mom. Your son, Henry Oko. I would like to end on a personal note or personal story. Um, which epitomizes a lot of what everybody has said here tonight about my mom. I was with her till the very end. I saw her take her last breath. But when I arrived in the UK, about two or three weeks before her passing, one of the first things she asked me was, my sister was there with me as well, and one of the f um, first things she asked me was, how are my staff doing? Who's taking care of them? I hope they are all okay. This goes to show you who this person was, always putting people before herself, even in her last days. So please join me and uh, wish her a very well-deserved rest in the bosom of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you so much, Henry, for those beautiful lines. And again, we say weep not, for indeed she lived an impactful life. Quickly, I'd like to invite um, Honorable Dr. Stella Dogu for a presentation of gift to the children. Please join me to welcome her with a round of applause. distinguished senators, honorable members, ladies and gentlemen. I stand here on behalf of the Association of Female Assembly Legislators with our female leader of the House of Representatives, Honorable Adeola, to make this small presentation to the children. We cannot say enough about Rose. I knew her such a long time ago, as my tribute said, when we wanted to resuscitate the old, better life. And everybody has spoken about her doggedness, about her love for people. But in the usual Nigerian style, we are here to make this presentation. I'll defer to my leader to do the presentation to the children. 
Thank you very much. Um, on behalf of the female legislators, would like to present this token to you, the children of our dear sister, Senator Rose Oko. So rest in perfect peace. Thank you very much. We do appreciate you, ma'am, for the gift. The Lord will replenish everyone who has contributed to that purpose. Uh, quickly, it's been, it's been tribute. It's been, it's been lines upon lines, and it's been so reflective. I'd like us to do an amazing grace. I'd like us to encourage ourselves. We'll go to page number six, and we'll quickly do just two stanza, then we'll do vote of thanks. Thank you. beautiful rendition. Like I promised, quickly, I'd like to invite the former majority leader of the House of Representatives in person of Honorable Mulikat Akondea Diola to help us with the vote of thanks. Thank you very much. Um, I think um, appreciation is apt at this particular time. And I will waste no time in thanking all of you here. On behalf of the Nigerian Association of Female Parliamentarians, I would like to thank each and every one of you that has made out time to attend this service this evening. As someone said, it is only out of love you know, that you can attend a service like this in a time like this. And for that, we say a big thank you. We thank the Honorable Minister who is here from the Executive. We th thank our Minority Leader in the Senate. We thank her colleagues in the Senate. We also thank the former governor of Cross River State, Senator Liel Imoke. It is only someone like you that would have, you know, found our late sister because you are a quality person as well. And that is the only reason why 
you could have found Rose Oko as a quality representation for her people. We thank all friends and family who are present, most especially the children. They have paid for you, they have advised you, and I'm sure you know better because uh, at this stage of your lives, I'm sure you can say, this is what I want. And also, you have taken a lot from your mother and, and father, and you continue to live the lives you know that they have thought, uh, both taught you. We also say thank you to the choir. We thank every invited guest here this evening, including the uh, members of the press. And I can only pray that as we journey back to our respective homes, I wish all of us safe journey. And we'll continue to pray for our country, that God should guide us. He should give us good leaders to lead us to the promised land. It is only on that note that I would like to say thank you and good night. Thank you very much. A round of applause for us. Thank you so much, everyone. It's been an eventful evening. It's been a beautiful evening. And indeed, Dr. Senator Rose Oko is no longer in the physical realm. She will always be remembered for the good works she did while on earth. Or, as someone said, okay. they say, the person said, neither fire, nor wind, birth, nor death can erase our good deeds. Indeed, our good deeds, they will forever remain with us. And we appreciate the fact that our life will still continue to speak, even over the children. I do appreciate everyone once again this evening. Quickly, I'd like to welcome, even at this period, people are still coming in. Senator Balogun and his dear wife, we say thank you for still ensuring that you make it this evening to this gathering. We do appreciate you, sir. And finally, I'd like to invite the priest, who will be doing the closing prayer for us, but I'd like to invite the children first, so that they can do um, a, a, a prayer for you, as requested by the Honorable and then we do have a closing prayer immediately. Thank you very much. Please, let's encourage them. Let's welcome them with a round of applause. Thank you. I'd like to invite Reverend Father John Mary Atep. Am I right? John Mary Atep. That's a surprise. Distinguished Senators, Honorable Members, Friends and Colleagues of Senator Rose Oko, the family members here and the children, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. I am delighted to be here and I thank God for the life of Senator Rose Oko. We are here because she knew the ultimate purpose of life, which is to know to love and to serve God. And since she has actually come and accomplished her purpose, may God be praised in her life. And may she continue to see the face of God now and always through Christ our Lord. And so we pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And I will raise him up and I will raise him up, and I will raise him up on the last day, and I will raise him up, and I will raise. Him up, and I will raise 
Zim Op On De La As De These are words of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so we pray. Praise be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all consolation. He comforts us in all our afflictions and thus enables us to comfort those who are in trouble with the same consolation we have received from him. Dear friends, let us pray together in the name of the church that Senator Rose Oko loved, served, and today we are all gathered here giving a lot of tributes about her personality. Loving and merciful God, we entreat our sister, mother, and friend to your mercy. We entrust your sister, mother, and friend to your mercy. You loved her greatly in this life. Now that she is freed from all its cares, give her happiness and peace forever. The old order has passed away. Welcome her now into paradise, where there will be no more sorrow and weeping, no more weeping or pains, but only peace and joy with Jesus, your Son, and the Holy Spirit, who live forever and ever. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, May her soul rest in peace. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord. May her soul rest in peace. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord. May her soul rest in peace. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you. The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you now and forever. to have a photo session with the executives, past and present. We'd like to have the legislators also. Uh, distinguished Senator um, Barry Bay, we would like to have everyone here to take a photograph with the children. To keep this memory alive. We need to keep this memory alive. We need everyone. That discrimination here. If e or she. I like to appreciate our YouTube audience. It may really interest you to know that we have people watching live on the YouTube. They've been commenting, they've been appreciating everyone who came to grace this occasion to honor their representative, the late Amazon, Dr. Senator Rose Oko. Thank you very much, everyone. We do appreciate you. We appreciate you. Thank you so much.
Individuals who are here to sign the condolence register, please do ensure to sign, append your signature there and let it be known that you were also here. Thank you very much. I'd like to announce again, please, as many of us are already leaving, please let's come back to append our signature. We need to sign the, the condolence register. We do need to sign the condolence register. When we all are gone, this will remain with the children, and this will keep them more alive in memory of their lovely mother. Thank you very much.
Everything I do 